recently, I made two videos about representing programming concepts in code. In the first one, we made a enum, which represents a lot of semantical structures, and we wrote a Fibonacci function、uh, with this enum. In the second video, we talked about the concept of scopes. Uh, static scopes, in particular, and in the end, we wrote an environment type, which essentially is a linked list that points to parent environments and can be used for adding new elements and looking up existing elements from the environment. Today, I'm going to write a function that takes a expression and an environment. And attempt to simplify the expression until it can be simpler. This function won't be able to handle every single expression, so it needs to throw out some invalid state. And to do that, I'm going to commit the cardinal sin for this YouTube video and make string conform to error. And then we'll just throw some strings when we found something we don't like. The simplest kind of expression is a primitive, a number, for example. So we'll just return a number when the expression already is a primitive. A variable is a arbitrary expression associated with a symbol, a string, and for it, all we need to do is see if it exists in the environment. If not, we'll just pause the execution. Otherwise, we get the expression and simplify that. Now a condition have sub-expressions, a predicate, a consequent, and a alternative. The predicate is supposed to be evaluated into some kind of a boolean value. Here we're just going to use a double instead to make things simpler. Since we're going to extract double from expression later, I'm going to write a function that does just that. This function will take a arbitrary expression, first simplify it, and then see if the result of the simplification is a primitive number. If it is, then we'll just return it. Coming back to the condition expression, now we can extract the double from the predicate and check whether that's zero. Depending on the result of that check. We can either move on to simplify the consequent expression or the alternative expression. A definition is a mutation to the environment. All we do here is associate the expression with a key. Since we have to return something, we might as well just use the expression itself. Defining and、uh, invoking a lambda is where the fun really begins. Recall that lambda is、uh, composed of a list of parameter names and a expression as a body. The special thing about a lambda is it comes with its own scope in which you can define new things. And when you call the lambda, the body is evaluated inside that environment. In order to make what I just said to be true, we must remember the environment at the moment we evaluate the lambda expression. In other words, we need to create a new environment for it and make our、uh, existing environment in which this lambda expression exists the parent of the new environment. And then we have to remember somehow. The parameter, the body, and the environment. And in order to do that, I'm going to add a new primitive to our expression that basically acts as a payload for all those information, so that we can use it later. And let's just call it a procedure. Having done that, the result of reducing the lambda expression will be very obvious, which is just a procedure. Let's move on to the call expression. Now we allow a arbitrary expression to be called. So first we need to kind of simplify that expression itself so that it becomes something we can call. Now it's time to unpack the information we stored when we evaluate a lambda and to get our 
uh, things like the parameter names, the body of the procedure, and the environment at which it was created. A call expression also comes with a list of arguments, and they are arbitrary expressions. So we should start by simplifying them in the same environment of the call expression. To evaluate the procedure's body, we first need to associate the arguments with the parameter names in the new environment so they're available to the body. Now it's just a matter of recursively call ourselves for the body with the modified new environment. If this feels unnatural or unfamiliar to you, I encourage you to review the scope video until you figure out what's going on. The helpful Swift compiler now reminds us that we've handled all the expression cases. Let's test out our reduce function by giving it the simplest possible input, which is just a number. As you can see, the output is, as expected, the primitive expression 42. However, this is a really clumsy way to see the result, uh, especially when it's just uh, as simple as a number. So I'm just going to make that slightly nicer by adding a custom string convertible conformance to the expression. And we're just going to handle the number case and ignore the rest. I think it's time to address the Fibonacci in the room. If we look at its definition, it's pretty obvious that it uses a few variables that still doesn't exist if we want to pass this uh, variable fib into our reduce function. Specifically, we'll need functions such as less than, plus, and minus in the Fibonacci definition. Unfortunately, that's kind of hard to do given our current expression definition, so we'll have to expand it a little. So now I'm going to add another form of primitive, which I'm going to call binary operation. Its payload is a function that takes two numbers and returns another. Binary operation is a special form of lambda that we can call. So we'll handle it in the handling of call expressions. It's named binary, so there must be two arguments that it expects. And each argument, per the requirement of the payload, will be a number. And then eventually, we will call the payload in our implementation language, which is Swift, and return the primitive value from the payload as a primitive. We just need to add a few of these binary operations in the environment before we attempt to first define the Fibonacci function and then invoke it, so that when we do invoke it, it's going to first look in its own environment, and then eventually it will reach the global environment and find these functions. Defining these operations should be trivial since they are all built-in operators in Swift. The less than operator is slightly different because we use double in predicates as opposed to bool. So we need to handle that as a special case. All that is left to do now is to write a call expression that will invoke the Fibonacci function with a argument. And we can try to simplify this call expression with our global environment that we've been working on. So it looks like our Fibonacci function returned one for the first Fibonacci number, one for the second Fibonacci number, and two for the third, and so on and so on. It shouldn't be too hard to verify that it's working as intended. I've been describing the thing we're doing to the expression as a simplification. But another word we can use is evaluation or interpretation. And in reality, we have just written an interpreter for our AST. This concept was mentioned towards the end of the AST video as well. 
All right, and that's it for now. Thanks for watching.